my philosophy for you just before I start painting is that um, 80 percent of uh, art is attitude and 20 percent is technique. So I feel that um, anyone can enjoy plein air painting. That's one of the reasons that I decided to be a plein air painter. Uh, I work in all different materials, but the joy of going outside and the joy of being on location is so great. Um, and also the camaraderie being with people. And that's one of the things that the water mill does uh, during its week and uh, when I teach plein air painting. So, so what I always like to do, one of my little signature things is to um, show you some of my supplies when I open up my camera. Otherwise, you're just looking at a big piece of white paper. So I thought this was kind of fun. Uh, this little piece that I have down here actually was a small, um, if you say painting in your own backyard, this is literally painting in the water mill's backyard in the tiniest notebook imaginable. So this one is really fun. Um, I do little sketches in here uh, really quick. Um, as I said, you know, you don't have to do something grand or very detailed. Um, I have a lot of fun with this little notebook. It puts the little guy away. And then, of course, in front of me, I have uh, some of the demo uh, photographs that you have. But I'll talk about my palette just real quickly because we're going to do a little color mixing uh, right as we start. Um, I've got it down now to uh, about, um, well, not about, I've got 13 colors. And um, the way I teach plein air painting is actually to do a lot of mixing with you rather than doing a lot of um, watercolor buying, which I know we all do um, since they actually uh, had a, 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 what do you call it, the color men in, in the UK where Windsor and Newton started making hundreds and hundreds of colors. Um, it really was, uh, it, it's, it's very um, interesting to go out and buy all kinds of colors, but you can really do everything with mixing with just about 13. I may add in, and this is why I wanted to say this to all of you, I may add in a color or two, and on the um, kind of on the docket here would be quinacridone gold or Windsor violet or light red. When you add a color to a palette, you want to make sure that you think about not only adding the color, because oh, it's very pretty. I buy colors all the time that uh, beautiful names. But then you have to think, how is that going to mix with all the colors that I have here? So when we limit our color palette, we're actually doing a great service to ourselves. So I'll put those guys away. My brushes that I'm using today, I have all my brushes out that I usually use. And this is what you would probably be bringing to see me in, um, in Italy. Um, I have about five or six brushes that I use, but I'm not going to be using the big ones today. Um, I or the other uh, ones that I have here. I'm just going to be using one small squirrel mop, a small synthetic, and a small detail brush, which is really just about it. Okay, started here. The other things I have in front of me are some gouache. Now, you probably, if you looked at the water mill website, you might have seen that I teach in both watercolor and gouache. Watercolor is a transparent medium. Gouache is an opaque medium. But all the great watercolor artists combine both of them. So when people say, well, it's not real watercolor, it absolutely is. It just one is opaque and one is transparent. Um, I can today I'm just going to do a little bit of touch up with some white gouache and another color called Jean Briant. Um, and if afterwards you want um, uh, me to send you anything about this, uh, uh, the colors that I'm using today, um, you can probably get this from the video but I'd be happy to send you names and I can answer any of those questions also when we take a little break. Let's get started. So you might've seen this picture, absolutely lovely. This is the uh, side area of the water mill. This is where you come in. This is where you're first gonna see the water mill. This is what we're gonna be drawing today. And I wanted to show you in my notebook, I've already done uh, a little bit of work with the demijohn. And I think this is um, this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be using a variety of colors. I'm going to show you how to do a simple object. Um, as I said in the promo, it's mini subjects. So I just want you to be aware that we're just doing one little thing at a time. I'm going to first do the watercolor. And then I'm going to show you, as the one on the left, I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of pen sketching, which will be really fun. So let's go ahead and get started. 
and I'm going to put my um, put my reference out of frame for you guys so you can see just my watercolors and my area that I'm going to be painting. And I have my uh, my uh, water just a little bit close so that you can see um, uh, when I dip my brush in. So if I'm working with a demijohn, I'm working with a really small subject. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of pencil sketching. And when you do pencil with watercolor, you want to make sure that you don't go press too hard. And really what you want to do is suggest, you want to suggest the areas. So in watercolor, we're not really, we're not really, um, what would I say, cemented to the, the area. You want to put in a light little uh, line suggestion of where you're, where you're going with your brush. That's what the pencil's for. Watercolor can be taught two ways. It can be taught as a, 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 a drawing that is then colored, which J.M.W. Turner did when he, not my relative. If you guys have seen the movie, anybody seen the movie? You can tell me when we take our break. Um, I'm not sure if he's my relative. I don't know if I want to, um, <laughs> I don't think I want to want to say that he really is my relative. A little bit of work here, suggesting in. And I'm going to put in just a little bit of greenery behind here. And maybe there's going to be a little bit of a, take this little line out there. And this is the wall. coming down and a shadow here. The one thing you want to do in plein air is always plan for your light and plan for your shadow. So it looks like there's shadow here and shadow here and shadow on this side of the wall. Um, make it simple for yourself. I see a lot of videos and I see a lot of plein air teaching. People talk about reflected light and uh, skylight and blue light. And <laughs> I think the one thing that's really important in a uh, plein air approach is to just make sure that you understand where your light is and where your shadow is. So obviously the light, if you look at the cork up here, is coming from this side and popping onto here. And everything on this side of the object is in shadow. So we're just gonna, this will be all green behind here. All right, so I'm going to uh, keep this drawing pretty loose. I've got another handle I want to put on here. And this, as I said, is in the backyard of the watermill. This you will, and, and if you come to the watermill uh, with me this summer, which is a beautiful time. August, uh, I lived for five years, well, nearly five years in the Mediterranean. August is one of my, late August is one of my favorite times of year because the days are warm and you have really long light. Uh, you know, things haven't started to get shorter in light. And uh, uh, the other thing is uh, the nights are getting really cool. One of the advantages of uh, the week that I'm going to be doing. So with the colors we have, we have um, for the watermill demijohn, we have a couple of colors. And I'm going to put some colors. Let's do some colors just real quick right here. We're going to do a little bit of yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna. And what I wanted to show you, I'm not gonna do all the colors because they're in your tutorial, but what I just did here is rather than mixing it on my palette, I'm mixing it on my paper. And that's another one of the things that can get you to the image and the painting really quickly. Um, think about putting your light color down first and then popping your dark color into it. So if we're looking at another color, for example, we can go in with a little bit of Prussian blue, which might look fairly dark to you here. And then I'm going to take a little bit of cad red and float it in. That makes wonderful purpley dark. So I've just really made for you my light colors and shadow colors. And if we boil everything down in this particular piece, that's what this whole photograph is about in this situation here with the demijohn is light and color.
So let's go in and we are going to put in some color right away. I'm going to uh, take a little bit of, actually, I'm going to go to, um, yeah, yellow and burnt sienna. Those were the ones I liked. And I'm going to do a little bit, a little bit of, just to have a few colors. But I'm going to go yellow first, just a little bit. I remember this is my light side. That's a, a, a cad yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna. And the other thing you want to do when you're working with small items is you're not detailing. You're not you're not trying to um, uh, tell the entire story. One of the things I think when I went to France just recently that I noticed is I traveled really in the foots of the what's the feet <laughs> or the area of the impressionists and the impressionists were ridiculed for not showing everything that was one of the the things that happened they they just uh they were completely um kind of well they were they were told that they weren't doing they weren't painting well yeah, they weren't they weren't uh enjoying uh or they they weren't really um doing anything that was real painting um people weren't enjoying what they were doing we're going to bring a little bit of shadow in here a little bit across a little bit across and they were ridiculed for what they did because they did little patches of color and that's really what i saw in france and what i see when i'm doing plein air is the idea that you can really get away with a little bit of color because the viewer is going to make up the rest of the story um, about the piece. We're going to put a little bit of dark here. So I'm working now with this Prussian blue, cad red, and yellow. And we're going to, this is a little bit wet, but it's okay. And we're going to bring the shadow area down. And uh, a synthetic brush is a good one for sketching. Um, I, this is what this particular technique here will be called watercolor sketching. So I'm, and I'm just taking some of the color here and kind of pulling it out a little bit. Uh, we're not doing fancy studio work. And we're not doing um, really uh, exceptional detailed work. And we're definitely not doing anatomical watercolor. We're just kind of letting things just kind of float and using the paper. Now, if you come to visit me uh, for my week in Italy, I do a lot of uh, uh, technique uh, with you at whatever level you are. Let's do something fun here. Let's do a little, what I call a carrot for myself. I want to put in the green that I have here. I'm going to put in the green of the Demijohn. They're all green glass. Um, I was just saying one of the things I like to do is really work with the students at whatever level they are. Um, after years of teaching, um, I found that everybody comes into classes um, thinking about their fourth grade teacher. Can I do it? Can I not do it? Um, everybody can work in plein air. Uh, that's one of the beautiful, beautiful things about, um, about plein air is that whatever level you are, this kind of sketching can really be super fun. So I'm going to take out got a little bit of color on this side, just remove a little bit with my brush. There we go. That's kind of fun. And now we're going to cut in a little bit of the back. So I think I, I think I can kind of just scrub some color down here. And again, this is sketching, so we're not we're not working with this um, to work on. This is a finished piece. And my colors that I've got here. Let's see what else I've got. Oh, I want to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my my picture aside so you can see my my palette much more easily. I'm gonna take my little pot of yellow here, and I'm gonna put some Viridian in here, and a little bit of Prussian blue, and we're making ourselves a really dark green. 
Prussian blue makes your dark green. Okay, so what do we decide? This is the light side, and we are just going to bring the dark, darkest dark, right behind there. And when we do that, look what happens. We end up getting a lot of light. We don't want to make it too wet. And we can also dig right into our yellow and kind of put some yellow in here, just little bits of it. And you want a little wiggly line here. This is a little bit wet here, so that went in just ever so slightly. We'll fix that later. And then on the edges, when you're doing watercolor sketching with mini subjects, just let the let it, everything kind of fade out at the top. So we said that there's some trees here. And they would be lighter at the top, a little bit of light. And if you really want to get into some dark, you would mix those three colors together, pad red, Prussian blue, and a little bit of viridian. And that'll make a super dark. And you can bring that in behind here. And you know what happens when we have super dark against light? It actually shows it up as light. So we can bring in here. Could be a tree that's behind there, not so not sure what it is. That really shows that up. Go back in and alter that with a little bit of green. And now we're going to let that come. We're going to let that come with a lot of light on this side. So we're putting in a lot of yellow over here and a lot more water. That's the green behind here. Okay. We could have a little bit of tree up here. Maybe there's a tree in the background. I don't know what's in the background. Bob Ross, I don't think if you know, uh, he's an American, an American icon. Uh, he did a painting show. Um, he's actually been immortalized now, but he had something called Happy Trees. And I always, whenever I paint a tree, I think of uh, think of that particular approach that he put in these final trees. Okay, you can go in now. Now we're still a little bit wet, but we're going to go in and we're going to put in a little bit of dark down here. My shadow is right under here. So this is the shadow side. And we're gonna put in a little bit of detail. And we're gonna put a little bit of detail that is still pretty wet. Um, I'm going pretty quick here. And we're gonna bring in a little bit of that shadow on the right side. And a little bit of detail of the rocks in the stone wall, which is a beautiful stone wall. Oh my gosh. Everywhere you look at the watermill is exquisite. It really is. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful environment. Um, the surrounding towns are fantastic. Uh, really, there's some there's just beauty all around, but you can just go in for the little moments. And we're gonna go with just a little bit of detail here. Hope that's playing out real well for you because it's looking pretty good for me on my side. Remember, there's detail, more detail actually um, in uh, light, but sometimes the detail does get a little waylaid because of the um, because of the light on it. And um, let's just pop in one more thing of bright green on here on this side just to get that a little darker. 
And I think we're done. Okay, how'd I do? 10.30, okay. So we're gonna stop right now. Um, I'm going to uh, open up, uh, Lois can open up for questions and ask me any questions you like. So if anyone has a question, please do unmute yourself and ask away for a minute or two. Can you tell us what paper you're using, please, Pammy? It's a yeah. really lovely paper. Oh, thank you. Uh, I am, I'm pretty much a traditionalist in using arches. I've always loved arches paper. I started recently to use um, Hanamule paper, which is from Germany. Um, but this that I'm working on today is arches paper. Um, it's um, not the white, white, it's just regular. And it's um, uh, uh, just a medium weight and it's um, uh, cold press. So I don't, I sometimes work on rough, but this is cold press. Um, um, arches what's, color paper. And what's, what's medium? Do you mean like 300 or less? Yeah, yeah. So so there's in arches, there's 90, 140, 300. 300 will keep your watercolors um, wet for a really long time. So that's the thick paper that's almost like a board. Um, yeah. But the but the 140 is very nice to travel with. And, um, you know, I would recommend to all of you, I, I sometimes have told people to travel with pads of paper, but it's just as easy to buy sheets of paper and cut it up to the size you want and pop it in some nice plastic bag. Uh, makes it a lot lighter. Um, and then you can just have a simple um, foam core or light board behind it as you can. So is that 140 that you're using? This is 140. Yes, it is. is this? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, Mary, what colors you do you have in your palette? What? What colors do you carry in your palette? Um, I can't, you can um, uh, look at some of the colors that I have. If you go on my um my blog and you also go on my instagram you'll see my color palette and i do outline my palette um i have um three reds um rose matter um cad red uh medium or sometimes i use pyrrol red alizarin crimson uh pyrrol orange or cad orange it depends on which one i feel yeah i, I try stuff out um cad yellow medium new gamboge yellow ochre viridian the ones that are the workhorses of my palette are the blues. So I stopped putting a lot of browns in my palette and wanted to just focus on mixing. So cobalt turquoise, um, uh, cerulean, uh, cobalt, French ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, and burnt sienna. And then, as I said, I'm trying to add something more now to my to my uh, uh, kind of repertoire. Someone asking was asking what green you were using. Oh, viridian. Viridian. Viridian, yeah. And, and how did you mix that dark color around the, the dark jar? Color, well, whenever you mix down three colors that are not that are opposite each other on the color wheel. If you mix colors across the wheel, you're graying. And if you mix three colors that are completely unrelated such as a, an orangey red, a green, and a, a dark blue, you've actually made black. So that's it's really an easy way to think about it. Anytime you go across the wheel, you're making gray. Anytime you go this way, you're tinting or changing the, the color uh, temperature or the, 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 the feel of the color. So yellow, yellow, green, green, et cetera. But yes, yeah, so when you mix a lot of colors together, which is why people go, are you making mud? You're not making mud. Three colors is two. One color is great. Two colors are excellent to mix. Three colors make a really wonderful dark. Four colors will get you in trouble. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Does that help you? Uh, some. Yeah. I can't get mine as dark as yours. That's really pretty. Uh, so Prussian you use blue. Prussian, what, Prussian blue, uh, cad red, and viridian. You could also use Prussian blue. Alizarin crimson and viridian. That makes an absolute black. Oh, viridian. Okay. Viridian. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I just want to show you some sketching just really fast because we're talking about painting in your own backyard. And maybe you're in your backyard with two pens and a piece of paper. And but the kind of pens I like to use are Micron or Faber Castell. Um, I don't get any money from the companies for saying any of this. Uh, I like both of them. I'm going to use the 
the uh, Faber-Castell today. And I'm just going to show you really quickly. Um, some of you may not be quite as bold as I am with drawing, but um, you can do a little pencil sketch first or a pencil layout. And I just want to show you how you would approach this, this idea with a pen, which is super fun. And one of the things I'd like to do when I'm out, if I, if I have no time or I'm in a cafe and they don't allow you to take out your watercolor palette, um, I like doing pen sketching. I did a, if you go into my Instagram, which is Pam, Penny Turner Art um, on Instagram, you'll see my French sketches. Um, I couldn't do like a whole, <laughs> a whole um, scene in the restaurant. There was a teapot in front of me. Um, but I did have my pen. And I did have a tiny bit of a tiny watercolor uh, set with me. And I was just able to work really fast. So I just got what I call a dot to dot method. And I will teach you that this summer. So your pen goes along, you kind of stop. Your pen goes along, you stop. You're not sketching across. And now we're going to use a really what I call a diagonal method of shading. And depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed, right-handed people are going to go this way, left-handed people are going to go that way. And uh, Leonardo da Vinci, they know his drawings are his drawings because the lines go the opposite direction. It's kind of interesting. We sketch across. Now remember, we're, we're keeping in mind the shadow. Remember that was dark on this side. Here. And a little bit darker under here. I really just in just a few seconds worked on a very, very fast little wall and maybe put a little something behind here. And I can put a little bit more in with my shadow. I got to a lot of pen sketching when I was teaching in the Greek islands because one of the things that happened is I couldn't go out with large arrays of painting equipment. And I ended up just having a, the students would just have a little bit of uh, equipment with them and weren't able to carry a lot. We were on buses going across the island. Sometimes we were on boats. Sometimes we were walking to locations. But if you have a pen, you can pretty much get a layout or an idea of your sketching or what you want to do in your next painting. So we are going to put a little bit more of a shadow here and a little bit of a diagonal line. And let's just look at a photo once again. Wow, I got a little more shadow down on here. That gives it a better look. And then I'm suggesting a shadow plane here. See, there's the trees in the background. Not quite sure what it is. Maybe I have a little bit of leaves. Um, that would really be uh, kind of my answer to sketching. We have. I'm looking at the clock. We have seven minutes. All right, we're going to go quick. <laughs> Okay. Any questions on the sketching real fast? I'll have Lois open up the, the mics for everybody. Uh, Pammy, this is Judy Westerfield. Um, when you're sketching <laughs> and, and you're doing uh, dot to dot, it looks to me yes. like you're, you visualize the dots. You're not literally putting in the dots like you showed on the wall. Is that correct? No, I, well, no, I'm not, but I'm, but I guess what I'm, uh, thank you. That's a great question. When I do the dot to dot, I'm going, and then I kind of, my pencil stops because my mind and my eye stop. And I don't want to keep on with this kind of motion. A lot of teachers tell you to keep on sketching with a large arm, uh, you know, but put a lot of lines. Well, if you stop in one location, then you can go on to the next location because you've seen where you're going to go. 
Otherwise, you just keep putting in lines randomly. And the dot to dot method helps me um, kind of achieve that um, a little bit better clarity on where I want to go next. You're absolutely right. Thank you. That's a great question. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And then if I just, for example, if I wanted just to put in a little bit of color on this, we're just going to do that real fast. And I was asking what the, um, the, the width of your pen is. Oh, this one is, this one is uh, an F. But they, and they're different, um, they're different widths. This one's a, it's, it's a little bit bold. Um, you can enhance, you know, we can come in with gray. What, what looks really nice on a pen sketch is coming in with a little bit of gray here. And I've just made, taken a little bit of red and a little bit of blue, a little cobalt blue and a little bit of pad red. And I'm just putting in a little bit of, a little bit of shadow on here just to enhance that. And I could do that. I could take one, just one tube of paint out with me, concern the color which is another thing you can do and just have some fun. There we go. How's that? A little prettier. A little suggestion of trees. Doesn't have to be green. I remember I'm using the white of the paper as my background. And that can be as satisfying as working in the full color. Okay, we. I see we have five minutes. Are we ready to power through on one more piece? <laughs> How are we doing? Lois, what do you think? Yes, that sounds great. Power three. Okay, power through. Oh, somebody's right. asking another question. Do you use pens that bleed? Oh, that's a great question. No, these the, the two that I just showed you, the favorite pastel and the micron, uh, neither of those bleed. There are ones that I've got that were some fun you can that actually that's an advantage. So suppose I go out and I paint. I, I do a drawing with a, a pen that does bleed and I don't have any paint. With it. I can take a wet brush. I can just get a tiny bottle cap of water and then pull out anything that I want to shadow on my piece. But for the most part, I do sketch with um, uh, waterproof pens. Yeah, these guys. If you'd like to take a screenshot of that, you're welcome to. But that was when I worked on this as Flower pot, watermelon, pissarro, painting in your own backyard. And the colors that I used for this, um, I think when I use my light, it's a little bit bright to see some of my writing. Um, I used Viridian, Prussian, Cobalt, French Ultra Blue, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cad Yellow Light, Rose Matter, and this one has white gouache in it. Okay, let's power through and see if we can do this. So I'm not going to paint quite as big on this one. Um, I think so we can get some um, get some time on this. Um, we're going to put first. I'm going to do something a little bit a little bit smaller. Now, remember, as you're looking down at things, you have smiley faces, and as you're looking away at things, as they go above your eye level, you have a frowny face. That means the line goes in that direction. We're looking down at this little pot. And when you put in flowers, that's one thing I could actually tell you. Um, people get a little bit uh, upset with painting flowers and feel like they have to do a lot. Of, you don't have to do really much detail at all. I mean, you just have something here. These little geraniums look like a little bit of a cloud. Uh, you just want to put in a little bit of a simple kind of fuzzy line. And then I'm going to suggest where it, a little bit of this color goes out. I am a little bigger than, but we'll, I'm going to put that little blue pot in the background and a little bit of upright here. I don't know if that's going to help, but I know I'm going to put a little spot of blue in the background. So in my pencil sketch, like I told you, you're just putting in the lines to remind yourself where your brush is going to go. Now, the big thing on this one, and Lois, are we okay? We're at, we're at 45 minutes. Are you okay with this? Absolutely fine, yes. Okay, okay, great. Um, 
we're going we're going to go out with the shadow here and as i said before the shadow plane is here and the shadow is going to be on this side and this side we always want to think about where that shadow is and where our directional light is and um that will give you the, the things that sing in the plein air piece um when our painting originally, of course, with the Impressionists, was all about light and shadow. There were, as you remember, three things. I don't know if you guys, um, anybody who was ever in my art history class, if you were in art history, um, there were three things that contributed to plein air. One was the invention of the paint tube, right? So guys could guys and uh, girls could go outside and paint. The second was the advent of photography. And that was really unique because photography left the studio and went outdoors and people were taking pictures out of doors. The third, which a lot of people don't know about or don't remember or really have heard about, is the invention of the square brush. So the square brush was the signature brush of the Impressionists. Before that, all brushes were round like this. And in the mid 1800s, they invented the crimping machine, which actually crimped the round brush flat, <laughs> which is kind of fun. So we're going to do uh, those are the three things and it contributed to Impressionism. And then, of course, it gave us our uh, idea that we're going to um, paint outdoors en plein air, which is a huge movement in in the world in the United States. Um, let's go out. I'm going to move. for just a second. I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow ochre. This is my light side. And I may put a little bit of yellow or gamboge in there just to brighten that up because this is the side that's going to have light on it. This is my pot, right? You have this in your this will be in your um, in your cluster photographs, okay? And that's a really nice little yellow there. We'll do that first because we want to cut some color behind it. And as it goes away from us, we're going to add. Um, we're going to add maybe a little bit of. We could add a little bit of cerulean. We could add a little bit of cobalt, and that'll be on that side. And we're also going to let a little bit of burnt sienna go in there. When watercolor hits the paper for the first time, it's truly beautiful. It really is. It's it's just lovely. Um, that's one of the reasons that I went to watercolor and started enjoying it. We're putting a little bit of cobalt in here. Shadow side. This one's going to be a lot quicker than the one I did before, but I'll show you both of them. I'm going to show you one little uh, extra trick that uh, I find it here. One brush that I had not showed you before <laughs> is my toothbrush. Uh, this is not my toothbrush, but it is a toothbrush. It's a toothbrush I take on location. Get a little bit of texture right away in a plein air piece. I'm just gonna take some color here. You know, my pot has a little bit of speckles on it and this area has a little bit of speckles behind it. Gives a little bit of texture on there. That's a really fun brush to, to carry with you. I always carry a little um, a little kid's toothbrush in my in my uh, um, kit. So I'm going to go to Rose Matter here. We're going to put in we're going to put in some light here. We're going in pretty quickly. And you can use any pink. Um, when I say that these are my 13 colors, and I did tell you about those. Um, Anything that you want to use, uh, rose matter, quinacridone rose, even opera pink, will make a nice, cool, um, pretty pink. This color is hard to achieve with um, doing dots here. This particular color is hard to achieve with the lizard and crimson. This and crimson is super cold and doesn't have a, a kind of a warmy sort of look to it. Um, so I think that that this particular kind of color, we're going to put some stems down here. 
but this is just watercolor sketching. Uh, this is so fun to do. We're just we're just putting in little bits of where the where the little bit of the the white flowers would be. And our pot's looking pretty good here. And we're going to go in with our green. So we know that the green that we had here, we still have little passages of green here, which was my Prussian blue with a yellow, cad yellow mixed in. And we can bring in, we're bringing in just like we do in finished watercolors, a little bit of the green first. Just having some fun here. You can kind of travel over onto that slightly wet pot. And I know we're running out of time and you guys, we, we need to finish here. Um, I'm going to make a dark with Prussian. Can I ask a question, honey? Sure. Um, I've noticed in all your pictures, you leave bits of white on the pots, on the wall, all over. Is that? Yes. Kind of for effect is that on per obviously it's on purpose but yes it just makes it look better how do you you know is that always I, what you do well i think one of the things is a watercolor is what you really want to use the watercolor paper to advantage right when you when you paint rather than thinking um i'm going to cover up everything because the watercolor paper um we're we're doing a uh um we're working with a um a surface where we where we absolutely want to use the paper because that's our lightest light. Right. That's our absolute lightest light. So we're putting a little bit of green here. We're suggesting where the table is in the back. And yes, I do. I, I let my brush kind of skip over the paper because it does give a really nice effect. And here we're going to put in, we're mixing some red with green. Remember I said red, green are opposite. So we're going to do a little bit of dark on this side. People go, well, how do you know which which one to do? I'm make, putting more green in here than I am red, and that's going to allow me to show my little white flowers on this side. See what we just did? And that's called negative painting, where you, which I, I don't really know that it's a very good term. I don't like the idea of negative painting, but it is painting what is not there to show what's there. So this is a great example of why we keep uh, some of the paper white and not do a, t uh, a whole um, brush work on uh, one giant area, which would then change the color of the paper. There we go. And I said where I was going to put a little bit of blue in the back here. That was my blue pot. And we're just going to put a little bit of color here. Just a little bit of Suggestion of something. Don't know what it is. Maybe this is the railing in the back. But you see how that dark color then shows up the light side of the pot? Okay, so we've got our first layer. We're just going for a second layer. And I'm going to do this quickly. I can see that we're a little bit over time. Thank you for staying with me. And we're going to put in a little Tell bit of dark in here. What? And we put our little dots in here. There might be a little bit of dots inside there. And then let me just show you the last little thing. This is really, really quick on this guy. Um, we've, we have run out of a little bit of time. I'm just gonna put in a little bit of color in the back. These little steps going up. And we'll put in our last little shadow, which is red with Viridian with a little bit of Prussian. But in the, in the tutorial, you've got some nice mixes in there too you can use. And we're going to bring in a shadow under here and a big shadow in here by the dark. And see, as soon as I put in that shadow, look what happens. Wow, that's so pretty. It pops with light, just pops with light, really does a nice job.
And I'm going to open up my white gouache and show you a little, little bit of dots there. So let's say I didn't really accommodate for as many flowers as I wanted in this area. And I have my white gouache. So this is whoops, Windsor & Newton uh, Designer Squash Permanent White. This is one of the things that I ask you to bring to the water mill. Um, so if you're working with watercolor with me, you are going to be doing gouache. Um, we can go in and we can put in some more little flowers over here. See, there's some flowers that we forgot. We can put some more out here. Maybe there's some out here. Can go right over a dark area. Maybe there are a few in here that will make it kind of more interesting. Maybe over this side, there's a few over here. And just dipping your brush into the gouache, you're not putting it on your palette. And then here we're putting a little bit of a little bit of light there, and a little light maybe on the edge of the pot here, and maybe a little bit of light on the edge of these flowers. See how that pops? That look at that popping right out. And we'll do one last little thing here. Oops. I'm just washing my cerulean blue. A little little spot of blue. The reason I put that in, really painting it in the watermill backyard. And see, we see uh, with my my uh, camera, uh, I was able to fuzz that out in the back. But in your painting, that's something you can do. If you're seeing this, you want to just reference this. Focus on this. Let this just be kind of fuzzy in the background, and that name will be. So let's take a look and just see if there's any more adjustment we want on here. I think we're just about done. A little bit of blue under here, a little bit of blue there. Pull this out just a little bit. One more toothbrushing, and we're done. Texture. That's better. There we go. Okay.